When I think about video games, branding isn't necessarily the first thing that comes to mind. Yet, branding could very well be seen as the most important aspect of the video game industry. Especially from a developer's perspective. In fact, I'd say branding can make or break a game and its future. As soon as I came to this realization, I started thinking about the different kinds of branding and how successful and unsuccessful different attempts have been. And I just really wanted to make a video on this topic. So, here we are. The way I see it, there are three different ways of branding in video games, and one doesn't have to exclude any of the other options. That being said, I'd still like to talk about them separately, because, well, structure, you know. As a video game company, you want people to recognize you, to remember you for what you have done in the industry. You're basically trying to build an image. One of the most historically prevalent ways of doing this is by building a game around a main character. This unique character is basically the selling point of the game, the actual gameplay comes in second place. To name a few examples, just think about Crash Bandicoot, Sonic or Zelda. Zelda has a bit of an asterisk to it, but I'll get to that in a bit. The most successful example is undoubtedly Mario. Mario has been the face of Nintendo for a while now and I can't see that changing anytime soon. The character design is so simplistic, yet so recognizable. The red clothing with the signature M, the big nose with the mustache underneath and him shouting out a web browser in every video game. I truly feel like Nintendo hit the damn jackpot with this character. And I mean, the sales don't lie. Just look at the recent Mario releases. With Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which is literally a remake of Mario Kart 8, outselling the latter by 18 million copies, and Super Mario Odyssey selling a whopping 18.06 million copies as well. Now, while Odyssey was new, refreshing and an amazing game overall, does the 769th installment of Karting with Mario deserve nearly 27 million sales? Probably not. But the power of this character really shines through in the sales of terrible games. Don't even start saying anything. Every franchise has bad apples and Mario is no different. You can't convince me Mario Party 10 and Mario Tennis Ultra Smash are good games. They're absolute garbage. Despite these games being critically acclaimed as doo-doo, especially Mario Party 10 sales numbers are shocking. Mario Party 10 sold over 2 million copies. That's 120 million dollars in revenue, if we're assuming all copies were sold at full price. That game does not deserve 120 million dollars. And I mean the big name that is Mario tricked me into playing Mario games that I had no interest in at all. I have uploaded 35 parts of Mario and Luigi's Superstar Saga on this channel before realizing the game just isn't meant for me. I really do not like it. The thing is, you just keep playing because it's Mario. Mario games have been so good in the past that you always associate Mario with a good game, even when it isn't your type of game. It took me 35 parts to realize I just wasn't liking the experience, but the name kept me going. That's the power of character branding. It's so damn important if executed well. If executed well is the most important part of my previous sentence, because that isn't always the case. Plenty of developers have proven that you can't just create a random character and be successful with it. I mean, just take Frogger for example. Frogger always wanted to be that next big thing, that next lovable character, and it just never became what the developers were looking for. And it's not just because it's a generic looking frog, or the fact that his appearance has changed about 47 times over the years, it's just mainly the games themselves. The games aren't bad, they're fun to play and have some good ideas, but they are often overshadowed by major flaws in the game design that make it frustrating to play through. 
Frogger has never been a video game giant in terms of sales, and by the time we got to the very lackluster Frogger 3D in 2011, I just couldn't help not giving a damn. I got to a point where I was just associating Frogger with mediocrity, and I wasn't the only one that just about had their fill. But let's not forget about the worst character branding in history, in the form of... Bobsy. <coughs> Bobsy 3D is everything that Mario 64 tried to avoid when they both released at the same time. It truly is one of the worst games ever created. And if they ever wanted to use the character Bobsy as a selling point, this pretty much killed any chance of this happening. I'm just gonna link Nitro Red's video down below so you can truly experience what Bobsy 3D is like. I truly do feel bad for the 200,000 people that bought this game. Funnily enough, Accolade came back with Bobsy the Wooly Strike back in 2017 and Bobsy Pulse on Fire in 2019, both with different developers than Bobsy 3D. But I will always associate this character with this piece of trash. The Wooly Strike Back numbers are disappointing to say the least, and it's very hard to find any sales numbers regarding Pause on Fire. But according to this illegitimate source called Steam Spy, it was bought by a max of 20,000 people. Now, I will say that there is a lot of time between Bobsy 3D and the Wooly Strike Back, so these sales numbers are partially also due to the game simply being unknown to Zoomers. But I can't imagine anyone not having nightmares when they see the name Bobsy again after playing 3D. <coughs> to close this segment, I'd like to briefly mention Ukulele. I'm just gonna assume you have heard about this game already, because the developer, Playtonic Games, managed to raise 2 million dollars on Kickstarter in order to fund this project. Playtonic Games were the key creative talent behind the classic that is Banjo-Kazooie, and I think that's where the hope and the massive amount of donations really came from. Like, these guys surely know what they're doing, right? Surely nothing can go wrong. I mean, the game wasn't bad, but with how much hype it got from pretty much everybody, Yuka and Lele felt like such a disappointment. Yuka and Lele were meant to be the next selling characters for these developers, like Benjo and Kazooie used to be. In 2019, they released a follow-up game in Yuka Lele and the Impossible Layer. The game is completely different than the first installment of Yuka Lele. Instead of a 3D open-worldish experience, they went back to what they felt comfortable with. A 2D platformer with 3D-ish graphics. You see, not only did these guys work on Banjo-Kazooie, they also worked on Donkey Kong Country. You can clearly tell Donkey Kong Country is what they're most comfortable with, because god, this game is much better than the original ukulele. I personally couldn't care less about the second ukulele game when it came out, since I was so disappointed with the first game. But after randomly stumbling upon a review, I realized I had given this game a middle finger way too fast. This truly is a good attempt at redemption, but I can't help but wondering if it's too late. This game is actually a lot of fun. It took a bunch of elements from successful games like Donkey Kong Country and Rayman Legends, but still managed to feel like its own game. If this was the first game, Yuka and Lely would certainly be associated with a positive gaming experience. But yeah, it's not. And that's a big problem. The sales numbers on Steam Spy aren't all that impressive after more than 11 months and only time will tell if the customer will forgive them for the mediocrity that was the first game. Speaking of mediocrity, let's talk about FIFA. A bunch of franchises aren't centered around the main character or anything like that. The game itself is the selling point. People buy the newest game in the series because of the formula. The most obvious examples would be FIFA and Call of Duty, aka the biggest money waste worldwide after buying shark cards on GTA 5, of course. I really ain't a fan of the yearly releases, but god damn do these games sell well. The formula of these games always remains the same. 
Let me just discuss FIFA for a bit to explain what I'm trying to say. FIFA is just playing a game of football, not soccer, against your friends or randoms online. Of course they spiced it up over the years with things like the journey and ultimate team, but the core concepts remain the same. Shoot ball, make goal. I really don't get why kicking a ball in FIFA 20 is worth the 60 bucks if you already own like FIFA 16 or something. But I guess spending money or grinding the same BPL team every year is appealing to the FIFA fans. But it's not just this type of formula that works, as the GTA series perfectly illustrates. Unlike FIFA and COD, every game in the series isn't just a reskinned version of previous games. And I don't mean to be insulting towards those games or anything, but in the end you're still kicking a ball in different looking graphics or shooting enemies in new environments. It's truly the limitations of those very successful core concepts rather than them not being innovative. Games like GTA have much more freedom in this respect. I mean, how often do you hear someone ask the question, what GTA is this? Opposed to, what god is this? The ratio has to be like 1 to 100. GTA's core concept is very simple. You're always some sort of a criminal or gangster that has to do a bunch of missions in order to get out of a shitty situation and succeed. There is however so much freedom around this concept. No matter the GTA, the missions never feel the same, the worlds feel completely new, the story never disappoints and it truly feels like a new game. But it's still GTA. I've played every single GTA but 4 and each of them is a completely different experience while still feeling like the GTA I have come to know and love. Not to mention the fact that they managed to create memorable characters in every single game. Instead of branding around a single character, they somehow managed to get people to love the new characters in every single game. Whether we're talking about Claude, CJ, Tommy or any of the side characters, all of them are so memorable in a positive way. The way Rockstar has managed to make it feel familiar and not familiar at the same time and still managing to make it a positive experience is why the GTA series never feels repetitive and is so successful up until this day. I mean, the sales numbers don't lie. People buy these games by just looking at the name. After decades of GTA games, the latest installment is the second best selling game of all time. Now, if that isn't successful branding with a core concept, I don't know what is. Now, another core concept branding attempt worth mentioning is one I have actually made a video about in the past. Ubisoft's Watch Dogs. Ubisoft's trailers never cease to amaze, and this wasn't any different. They presented Watch Dogs as this huge open world game that was revolving around the digital world we kinda live in right now. You were supposedly able to control every piece of technology and use it to your advantage in order to succeed in missions. The whole idea was to present a modern day world and the issues technology brought into it. This idea was very, very interesting to a lot of people. Including me. I watched every single trailer possible, I watched leak videos, I read articles about possible leaks, you name it, I saw everything. I just wanted to have this game everything about it fascinated me. As a result of this excellent marketing, this game got about as much hype as cyberpunk nowadays, and the sales numbers were higher than anything Ubisoft had ever released. But it didn't take long before the hate emails started flooding Ubisoft's inbox. I thought the game was a lot of fun, but it doesn't take a genius to see how many flaws this game had at the time, and still has honestly. The driving was garbage, the car designs were ugly, the graphics were scaled down by 300%, the controllable technology was only able to perform one action and much, much more. For many people it was hit or miss and sadly there were about as many misses as hits. Ubisoft didn't give up though and they released Watch Dogs 2 in 2016. They took every complaint people had about the first game and fixed it. I truly have nothing bad to say about Watch Dogs 2. It's an amazing game. But just like the ukulele example from earlier, many people were like, Fuck this shit, I ain't falling for this again. 
and the sales numbers haven't come close to those of the first game. It's just a disappointment of the first game that's still lingering in many people's minds and as a result of that they have missed out on a really cool game. Just like character branding, a negative experience with a game can make people give it the middle finger by just reading the name, not knowing what's behind the title's doors. Watch Dogs isn't doomed yet though. Despite the sales numbers being lower than the first game, many developers would dream of these sales numbers and these millions of people are surely still interested in buying Watch Dogs games after playing Watch Dogs 2. By the time you're seeing this, Watch Dogs Legion will likely be out and I truly think this will decide if the name has a future or not. You can just win people back to then slap them right in the face for a second time. Now, before I move on, I have one more thing to add. Earlier I mentioned I'd get back to The Legend of Zelda later on and now is the time to do so. Like I said, one way of branding doesn't have to exclude the others. And The Legend of Zelda is the perfect example of combining both character and game branding design. Throughout the years, many Zelda games have been released and we're at a point where pretty much everybody knows what The Legend of Zelda actually is. I personally love this franchise. Zelda games are hard to explain and this video certainly isn't the place to do so, but every single game revolves around the main characters in Zelda and Link, and the core concepts of the game never really change. And when I say never really change, I really do mean the core ideas with rupees and such, because the games themselves feel so different from each other. And yet, they're all so damn good. I think we're at a point where the developers can literally do anything with this franchise and we'll just buy it since the previous games have never disappointed in the past. The combination of these iconic looking main characters and fantastic game design is something most developers can only dream of. When you think of Zelda, you think of the little green man. And when you think of the little green man, you think of a great time playing video games. It truly is something that will sell based on the name alone for many years to come. Anyway, enough about that. Let's move on to the final major way of branding. Branding as a company. There isn't really much to this and this won't be a long explanation, but it certainly is a very, very important one. This way of branding isn't directly connected with a video game but more so to everything this company releases. Just look at Nintendo for example. Nintendo has released so many quality video games at this point that I just watch Nintendo Directs for games I have never even heard of. Whenever you hear Nintendo, you just expect quality and even if the title or said new video game looks stupid or uninteresting, you still feel like checking it out because it's Nintendo. And then you have companies like Rockstar, which we all mainly know for the banger GTA games, which has earned them a good reputation in the video game industry. Because I associated Rockstar with quality, they even tricked me into buying Red Dead Redemption, which I ended up really enjoying. Sure, right now people are kinda pissed at Rockstar for milking GTA 5 for the past 7 years, and now it's even coming to PS5 as well, which is fucking ridiculous, but in terms of releases, you can almost always expect quality from this company. Next up, you have companies like Ubisoft, which has a reputation of promising a lot and then disappointing everybody. Before any of their games release, they always have these amazing trailers and they show a bit of gameplay that always looks amazing, to then kick you right in the nuts once the actual game comes out. The graphics are usually downgraded way too much compared to the trailer that brought the customers in. Just think of Watch Dogs. The game is a lot less interesting and more repetitive than they made it out to be. Just think of The Division. And a lot of the time the games just feel so unfinished. Think of any Far Cry game ever. To me, Ubisoft just means, quote unquote, don't get baited into buying this for 60 bucks you moron. If it looks too good to be true, then it probably is with this company. I don't think Ubisoft can really win my trust back after all of those games. I'm not saying they make bad games, in fact I have enjoyed most of them, but they lie to you without actually lying to you before they release a game. But then 
deep down at the bottom of branding as a company, there are Activision and Blizzard. Or now that they have combined forces, Activision Blizzard. We're at a point where I don't even care anymore if they make the best game ever created. I will not be giving them a single penny anymore. Both inside and outside of games, they have made me furious at several occasions. They have just been money grabbing left and right without anything worth spending money on in return. They don't care about your experience if it doesn't bring additional money into their bank accounts. I'll just cut it off here before I get too worked up and start ranting about politics and free speech for about three and a half hours. That's... nobody wants to watch that. If you're not aware of Activision, Blizzard and their scummy practices, then I'd highly advise you to read up on it and stop supporting these people. God, I hate Activision and Blizzard. Their brand is ruined forever to me. No matter if things turn around, no matter if there's new people in the company, fuck them. But yeah, to me, those are three major ways of branding. Character branding, game branding and image branding. There are arguments to be made for other ways of branding, but I just wanted to tackle the most prominent ones in the industry in this video. In order to be the most successful you can be, these three should honestly all be present at the same time. To me, the most successful branding till date is undoubtedly Mario. I ain't the biggest fan or anything, but you can't deny that everybody knows who this plumber is. And you'd have to search really hard in order to find anyone that says, fuck Mario. I think what impresses me the most about Mario is that the developers have experimented with a bunch of different types of games and almost none of them have flopped. It's impressive how they managed to make different styles work so well. And let's not forget, Nintendo is just a great company overall. Sure they have made mistakes in the past, but to me there is no valid reason to stop supporting them. They're a legit company. Probably the least scummy company in the entire video game world, if I'm brutally honest. Mario and Nintendo have managed to tackle all major aspects of branding successfully, and that's why their games are selling like crazy. And... Rightfully so. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. This video doesn't necessarily have a point or anything, but... Talking about different ways of branding and various attempts from companies doing so was a lot of fun, so I hope the viewing experience is just as good. If it was, then definitely leave a like rating. If you liked it even more, then definitely consider subscribing, uh, it would be cool, I mean, I'm not growing anymore and it sucks. But uh, yeah, hope you have a great day, thanks for watching and um, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. It's that tongue kissing, no fuck. Give a young college dropout and song. Flip a boy Denzel, go put the city on. See a tourist now, like he's Scotty Pippen. My best friend, share a birthday with me. Had to see the city with a smile on. And the shoes fitting so magnificent. He's happy feet, it's like a mile on. I'll spread his love. Got my good vibes with me, you should see me. Cheat the corner, I would treat my woman when that shift come quick.